This teacher from Ukraine faces tragedy when the war with Russia begins. After losing his wife and home to Russian soldiers, he joins a sniper unit seeking revenge. Can he get revenge on the Russian soldier who took his wife? Or will he lose his life in this war of vengeance? Watch this gripping movie recap to uncover the thrilling conclusion. Mykola and his expecting wife Nastya reside in a serene area of the Danvers region of Ukraine. They are both recognized as the region's first eco-settlers. Nastya is a talented artist who enjoys wood carving and drawing. She even crafts a wood angel specifically for Mykola to serve as an amulet of protection. Mykola commutes by bicycle to the neighborhood school where he teaches math, physics, and ecology. The peace sign in front of their house is the paw of the white raven, which refers to an old myth about a raven that felt pity for people and brought them food and fresh water while sacrificing its feathers. The lack of electronics at home prevents the couple from receiving news until Mykola arrives at work and watches a little TV during his break. That is how he finds out about the protesters killed in the capital of Ukraine and the potential invasion of that nation by Russia. Ivan, a student, bullies Mykola in class because he thinks the teacher is strange and weird and should be fired. But Mykola never allows him to get angry with him because he values pacifism and strives to mold the young people's minds. Mykola passes by some soldiers one morning on his way to work, but he doesn't pay them any attention. He is shocked to find the school empty when he finally gets there, and the TV quickly explains why Ukraine has been invaded by Russia. Mykola becomes concerned for his wife and rushes back to his house as he recalls the soldiers he had earlier seen. But it's already too late. The Russians are beating Nastya up there, and when Mykola tries to defend her, they also capture him. The soldiers light a fire inside the home and depart after making sure they are not spies. However, the soldiers don't think twice to shoot Nastya when she attempts to strike back by throwing a stone at them before eventually leaving. Mykola, who is devastated, holds onto his wife's body as he watches his home burn to the ground. After confirming that Mykola is an innocent civilian by checking his identity, two Ukrainian militia members come across him hours later and assist him in preparing a grave for Nastya. They transport him to their base next, but not before Mykola makes sure to take the wooden angel with him as a memento of his wife. The higher-ups at the base are unimpressed by the unexpected arrival of a stranger, because they suspect him to be a spy. But Mykola quickly disproves their suspicions by declaring his intention to enlist in the army and expel the Russians from his native land. Mykola is subsequently sent to a rigorous training program where he must master the use of firearms and physical exhaustion, two things that, as a pacifist, he has never done before. He finds it particularly challenging to disassemble and assemble weapons, which makes his superiors laugh, especially after he reveals his choice of the codename Raven. Mykola refuses to be defeated and works even harder to prepare, staying up late to practice his weapons while carrying the Wood Angel nearby to keep his focus on his goal of exacting revenge on his wife. A few weeks later, the trainees are informed that the army is in need of volunteers because there aren't enough snipers at the front. Mykola offers to help right away despite the lack of interest, only to be met with more jeers. Mykola, who is still determined to succeed, accepts the challenge to prove his mettle. In less than 20 seconds while wearing a blindfold, he disassembles and reassembles an AK-47, winning everyone's respect. They also begin referring to him as Raven, as he requested. Mykola finds the theoretical portion of sniper training to be simple because of his aptitude in math and physics, which allows him to perform calculations faster than the instructors. He also does a great job of adhering to the first rule, which is to remain completely still and silent, even when an instructor fires a gun at the ground close to him. Unfortunately, he performs poorly during the actual shooting because, for some reason, they gave him a different firearm than the others one that is inappropriate for war sniping. As soon as Mykola brings this up, he is told to take care of it. Once more, Mykola makes a plan to show his abilities and refuses to give up. The final sniper test is conducted at night, and the candidates must fire as soon as the instructor fires a flare to illuminate the area around their targets. Mykola doesn't shoot just yet. Instead, he uses the light to measure the distance. Once the test is over, he shoots in total darkness and manages to hit the target exactly in the center, something no one else has ever done. As a result, Mykola receives the highest grade at graduation and is put in a first-class unit. 
Mykola's first mission requires him and his fellow snipers to liberate a crucial checkpoint that the Russians have taken over. Each sniper is given a target after the team successfully enters the area undetected. They have to stop their plan as a civilian car approaches the checkpoint, just as they are about to fire though. When the couple is asked to leave, the Russian soldiers force them to come out and turn in their passports while refusing to give them back. The Russian soldiers retaliate violently when the man makes a scene and demands to have his belongings returned. When Mykola's team sees this, they launch an attack and kill every soldier with swift, accurate shots, including the soldier who attempted to hold the civilian woman hostage. The team hoists the Ukrainian flag after the mission is complete in order to retake control of the checkpoint. When they get back to base, Mykola learns that his fellow newcomers have left for a different mission. Taking advantage of the opportunity, he goes to the school where he used to work and is profoundly moved by the depressing sight of the dusty classrooms. When the other team returns the following day, Mykola receives the worst possible news. One of his friends has been killed by an enemy sniper. This is one more justification for Mykola's desire for retribution. In preparation for the upcoming mission, Mykola's team places a number of explosives on trees and covers them with leaves before hiding in the grass and watching for their adversary. Mykola hesitates to fire when the Russian soldiers show up in the forest as expected because he notices something unbelievable. Ivan has joined the Russian army and is traveling this way with the rest of their adversaries. When the captain commands him to fire, he snaps out of it and Mykola hits the detonator, killing all of the Russian soldiers, including Ivan. When the captain asks him what it was all about, he replies that Ivan had made his decision after hearing Mykola's explanation. Later, Mykola and the captain connect over their shared love of their hometowns during a break. The captain explains that he and his wife have an agreement not to disclose to his daughters the nature of his work, so they believe he is on a business trip and he is carrying a picture of his family with him. In exchange, Mykola displays the wooden angel and explains that it stands in for his own family. A sniper team positions itself to wait for the Russian forces preparing to invade this area after the Ukrainian forces successfully secure the trenches by the border a few days later. Mykola prepares to go about his business while always carrying the angel with him. However, he loses his usual composure when he sees the man who killed his wife among the approaching Russian soldiers. Mykola, who is desperate for vengeance, repeatedly asks the captain for authorization to fire, but each time the captain declines because the enemy is not yet in the proper position. After some time passes, Mykola grows impatient and fires, hitting the soldier but also revealing their location to a covert enemy sniper, who then retaliates and kills the captain. Mykola has to drag the captain's body through the field while dodging every bullet and bomb as the Russians open fire on them. Mykola finally returns to the base hours later, and when he does, his superior assures him that an investigation will be conducted to identify the sniper who killed the captain. They'll contact Mykola to take care of him once they've located him. Mykola, who is experiencing extreme guilt, decides to focus on solo missions in an effort to atone for his error. His sniping abilities are still on point, and he's successful in killing numerous Russian soldiers. But without anyone to keep him alert, he also becomes too risky and suffers an arm injury from an enemy bullet. Mykola retreats to a covert location to rest and catch up on the news to learn the latest developments in the political status of the talks with Russia. But he receives a crucial call during his break. Mykola must return, because it turns out the army has located the sniper who shot the captain. The soldiers are informed of all the information so far that has been gathered before the mission starts. The range of the sniper's bullets is extensive. Sari is the man who has already eliminated three machine gunners and five snipers from the Ukrainian army. In order to demoralize them, he records every kill and posts the videos online. Even worse, he posted the audio recording of their captain's fatal accident. At least they were able to locate Sari, thanks to all these casualties. A chlorine storage in the chemical plant, where the enemy is hiding prevents them from flooding the area with mines, so they have devised a backup strategy. The lower soldiers will be eliminated by their snipers to make room for Mykola to enter covertly and confront Sari. When the mission starts, every Ukrainian sniper positions themselves and waits for Mykola to enter the structure by stooping through the field. The second attacker, who still remembers Mykola and tells him he should have killed him the first time, is the first soldier he encounters. 
Mykola gives his teammates the go-ahead to attack after killing him with a single swift and satisfying shot. This causes all of the Ukrainian snipers to fire at once, allowing them to sweep the area without raising any alarms. Sari is one of only two remaining Russian snipers. They don't realize there is a problem until they stop getting communications and go to check on their fellow soldiers, only to find them all dead. Mykola takes advantage of the opportunity to sneak deeper into the structure while Sari calls for reinforcements and orders the other soldier to keep watch before returning to his position and being shocked to see a small wooden angel. At that precise moment, Mykola emerges and charges Sari, killing him with a knife while the other Russian soldier is killed by a waiting grenade. When Sari's backup finally shows up, Mykola uses his radio to warn the new recruits that they will pay for their actions. The Ukrainian soldiers open fire on the Russian truck as soon as it pulls into a parking spot, instantly taking out all of the targets. Mykola decides to take a break and return home to visit Nastya's grave after exacting revenge on his wife, his friend, and his captain. He also makes sure to fix the cross that had fallen from its place. Sadly, he must leave despite how much he longs to return because there is still much to be done for his nation. He is about to embark on another solo mission and is prepared to eliminate as many Russian soldiers as is required. That's a wrap for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. To see more like this, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Feel free to comment with your favorite movie for a future recap. Take care until next time.